This widescreen monitor is really the one thing that helped me to streamline my working process as much as possible. <laughs> It's Monday morning. I had a really slow start today. I had a business meeting it was quite boring totally pointless and now for the rest of the day I have to take care of a couple of things that have to do with this meeting So let's answer the probably most asked question most people ask me what the screen is that I'm working with with logic What I really love about it is that you just have to plug in this one Thunderbolt cable and you're good to go. That's one of those widescreen monitors from LG in 34 inch. There is a newer version out that has a curved display but I'm not really a big fan of it and this version is a lot cheaper. It's really perfect to work with it. I'm also sure a lot of gamers will love this display. I use it for Logic Pro X. That's the software I'm making all of my music with. And they read it, the X version of Logic to be more suitable for a single display setup. It's now all in one window and for example if you press X it opens up the mixing panels. I used to have two displays for the older versions of Logic. For example I had this entire mixing thing on another monitor. But this size of a screen gives me enough room up here to do the arrangement and still have the mixer opened at the same time. A couple of years ago I used to make my music with this old G5 and I had two of these screens standing right next to each other. It was pretty wide so one of them was always kind of standing in front of the speakers and was blocking the sound so I had to set the speakers farther apart which caused acoustic problems in the room so having just this one screen is way more comfortable and of course you're avoiding a pretty annoying gap in between of those monitors. That's the back of the screen. You have here three USB ports, two USB 2 and one USB 3 port and a USB up port. Two Thunderbolt connections. One of them is going straight into the computer. The other one is going to the sound card. And I have to use a Thunderbolt to Firewire 800, Firewire 800 to Firewire 400 converter because the sound card is still running Firewire 400. That's not an issue of the monitor, that's just Apple changing their connections a lot of times. But to be fair, the sound card is super old. As you can see, it got heavily used over the years. You have a display port connection two HDMI, a headphone jack and of course DC in and the on and off switch. Here in the front underneath the screen you have a little joystick and with it you can access all of the settings. Now it's time for me to start working on this track. I can share with you my working process as I usually do but I will tell you all the pros and cons of this monitor as soon as I'm done with work. Down on the street, the feet, repeat the simple left and right. It's now five, I'm all done with work. I have a little thing that I can show you that will help you to improve your workflow. For all of the Logic plugins, you can set a standard. For example, I could save now this low cut into the standard setting and every time I open up an EQ it would open up like this and save me a bit of time. I'm also using one of these standards for the logic compressor. I use it mostly for side chaining so it opens up with all of the right settings right away. Now let's get back to topic. The main reason why I bought this monitor is of course the huge amount of working space that you get with it. You can have three separate pages of Safari opened at the same time. I love the colors, the resolution is good, I love that I can just plug one Thunderbolt cable into the computer and it's ready to go, everything else is plugged into the monitor on the back, it kind of functions as a USB and Thunderbolt hub, just buying a hub on itself would be like 200 euros and the screen is between 400 and 600 I think at the moment. I also really like the simple design of it and the coolest feature is definitely the stand that makes it appear as if the monitor is floating. What I don't like is that sometimes if I try to charge my phone over one of the USB ports the hard drive shuts down because it's not getting enough power anymore. 
so you might need an external USB hub that is powered. Another little problem I sometimes run into is having the computer closed while operating it on the monitor. This computer is actually not made to run while it's closed. The whole venting system doesn't really work. So if it's warm in here, it overheats, makes a whole lot of noise. I then have to open it and then the entire system gets confused which of the two monitors is actually the main one. This might cause windows jumping around or being caught in between of the two monitors. Then you have to drag it around. It's, it's a little bit annoying, but not the biggest problem in the world. Of course, the built-in speakers are pretty much worthless. I can't imagine any situation in which you really want to listen to anything on them. They sound really, really bad even worse than the built-in speakers of the MacBook. So that's pretty much all I have to say about this monitor. It's really good if you're still working on like a small screen or you have a similar setup like me with a laptop that you always take with you but you want to have something nice to work a bit faster in the studio. This thing is really perfect. As you might remember I took this camera with me two days ago to play paintball with my friends. This was maybe not the best idea in the world. It's now all covered with paint and it's really hard to press the movie button and the lens is not moving anymore properly. Zooming is impossible. So I thought about going now to a DIY store to buy a couple of things to get this camera clean again. I'm not sure if it would work, but I hope it does. Wow, so much stuff. This would be a paradise for Vanessa and her decorations. So please don't tell her. They unfortunately don't have what I've been looking for. So let's try it at the next store. The store is a lot bigger. They should have everything I need. They also didn't have what I need. I need a special liquid that vaporizes really fast and doesn't go into the camera. I will now try it at home with water. Let's see if this will work. If there's no vlog tomorrow, you know why. The lens is usually moving out and it's so full of paint that it can't move and I can't zoom. And I don't want to replace this again. This would be camera number five.